Good afternoon or good morning. This is Kyle with 888 VoIP. I'll be your presenter today. Appreciate everyone taking time out of their day and their schedule to meet with us as we discuss the new Yealink T5 business phone series. Uh, we're really excited about this new phone that Yealink's bringing to market. It has a lot of feature upgrades and uh, a lot of new uh, potential sales opportunity, I think, to generate additional business around the Yealink brand. So we're really excited about bringing it to market and sharing it with everyone in the channel. And so uh, once again, just want to say thank you so much for, for taking the time to meet with us. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. We'll, we'll do a question and answer uh, session here at the end of the presentation. It'll be about 20 minutes or so. However, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them into the, uh, the question box as a part of the, uh, the GoToWebinar setup here. Might not answer it right away, but at least I'll have that on the list. So we can go ahead and address it at the end of the, uh, the presentation. And so um, with that, that's about it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So at a high level, the T5 phone is a next-gen collaboration phone that Yannick has developed to enhance its current product line card of IP phone telephony products. Uh, it's going to be the new flagship product series that Yannick's bringing to market. It's been in the works essentially since the beginning of Q1 in terms of bringing the product into the channel and doing some of the logistics work behind that, but also some of the marketing and, and, and support preparation for that. And so at a high level, this is the new T5 series, if you have yet to see it before. All in all, it's seven phones. Uh, some of them are enhancements as we see with the T53 and 54 as an example, even the T58. They're uh, building off of existing technology and, and generation, first generation models that we've seen previously with the T53S, 54S, and, and 58V, and 58A. We'll go ahead and look at the feature set in a little bit more greater detail on a per phone basis as we go through the presentation today. But this is the hierarchy of the new series of phones that the link has rolled out. And this is the idea behind the model of sale and the target customers that we want to present these phones to. With the VP59 up at the top here being the top flagship video phone and media collaboration phone. And then we work down to the 58 with and without camera as the smart business phone. And then our middle of the road user, so to speak, or day-to-day -day user would want to take a look at the 53 or, or 54 and even potentially 57, depending upon a couple of different factors we'll discuss a little bit later on. So as we're all, I'm sure, aware if we're working with or have been working with Yang in the past is this is a, a new series of phones, but it's not replacing any sort of phones, at least in terms of the T2 and T4 series. So why would we want to upgrade to a T5 business phone? And, and so the first and foremost is this is the newest, latest, greatest product that Yannick has available in the marketplace. And it also is an enhancement of what we saw with the Android operating phones, especially with the previous release of the T56 and 58. Not only that, but the T53 and 54S have also been enhanced. Some features have been added. So this is the cutting and leading edge in terms of feature set and, and product technology that Yealink currently has available on their line card. In addition to that, because it is a more uh, feature rich and leading edge in terms of technology product, it's more of a diverse product set to target higher end customers with. It caters to the higher end marketplace, provides a more diverse set of products to more high-end or collaboration-based users, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as well in this presentation. And we'll talk about how we maximize ROI with these products because of the feature capabilities of the phones, how diverse they are, and how wide-ranging the feature set is. We're not just talking about an IP endpoint that will take a SIP registration and make calls. There's going to be a bit more to it now when we talk about the T5 series as a whole. So let's take a quick look at how Yaling perceives the, the market position and then the product position relative to some of the, um, the users in the space um, and some of the other models that they've currently, uh, that they previously sold. So starting at the entry level point, we want to take a look at maybe like the T53 or 54 and would generally compare that to users who are adopting the T42 today, potentially even the T27. Uh, there's a very similar feature set that we'll get into, but that'll be the beginning or I guess uh, 
entry level point for the T5 series with the T3, so or T, uh, T5 series, I apologize. So right away, the, the entry level of the T5 phone series is a little bit higher than what we see with, with maybe as an example, the T21, 23, or the T40, 41. Uh, it's a little bit higher end, and so that would be the, the higher level point of entry. And so we work that up through the T54, and that's gonna be your mid-tier here, comparative to users who maybe have used the T46 in the past or have looked at that, like the price point, like the feature set, but maybe looking for something a little bit more current. All the way on up now to the T57 or even potentially 56, depending upon the use case, but now we're talking about an Android operating phone, a larger color touchscreen, and so adopters who have previously looked at or used the T48 as an example, it may be a better scenario with the T57 now to present a phone like that. When we look at the T56A, uh, or I'm sorry, and the T58V, uh, those two phones in particular are going to be replaced, and they're going to be replaced by the T58A. That phone has been upgraded with a new firmware and chipset, and no longer are we going to sell the exclusive video format of the T58 and the T58V version. We'll purchase that as the new T58A, either with or without a camera, and that's a USB camera, very easy to add in either at the time of purchase or after the purchase because it is that USB camera. And then the VP59 is going to replace the T49G. Um, T49G was the second gen video phone that Yannick brought to market about three, four years ago. And so that one has been a pretty successful, I would say, IP video phone. But this now, the VP59, is an upgraded version of that. And therefore, we'll replace the T49G as it gets a uh, end of sale uh, notification declared on it. So we wanna take a look now at a couple of different use case scenarios for these different phone models, um, looking at a couple different user workspaces around maybe potentially standing desk environments, shared workspace environments, and, and on the go environments, and see how the feature set of some of these new phones kind of stack up for the, the different types of uh, potential workplaces that these could be used in successfully. So what we see now with the T53 and 54, and, and certainly with the new 56 and 7, and, and, or 58 and 7, is an adjustable LCD screen. Um, if you've seen the 53S or 54S in the past, you'll know that those are fixed screens in terms of their positioning. Uh, so now that is a feature of the adjustable uh, display feature is now incorporated across the entire T5 lineup allowing for different types of use. I personally know that I use a standing desk and a lot of people in our office do as well. And so having just a, a small feature like that goes a long way just to make it a little bit easier to use a phone. And that's kind of the trend we're seeing in a lot of offices too is uh, desk workers are asking for sit and stand types of desks. And so this is just one of those neat little features that takes the user into account and, and helps the user just have an overall better experience when utilizing the phone. A unique feature of the T5 series now, and Yannick is pretty proud of this uh, feature, is the acoustic shield. It creates essentially a small bubble or a radius around the phone that isolates sound from the outside and kind of cuts down on the outside chatter and ambient noise that could potentially affect a, a, a user's call in a workspace where you have a lot of different people if the cubes are low, no cubes whatsoever, just more of an open workspace environment. The acoustic shield itself is built into the T5 phones. So it does allow that user to have that additional level of quality when making their phone calls and creates a little bit more of a comfort factor when considering what type of phone to be used in certain types of spaces, especially congested workspaces. In addition to the acoustic shield, Yannick has incorporated the noise proof technology that they've seen or that they've had along uh, a lot of their most recent additions in terms of their conference phones with the, uh, the CP960, um, 920. The, the noise proof technology has been something that Yannick has continuously worked on developing and, and enhancing over time. And so in conjunction with the acoustic shield, we see that noises like keyboard typing, paper shuffling, machine noises, those 
types of sound packets essentially are identified and, and cut out of the stream of data being sent between the two phones in the session. Great, so great for like the VP59 or, or T58 when being used on video, and maybe we're not using a handset per se, and are doing maybe like a small collaboration or meeting in a uh, huddle room or in an office. This is just a nice way to, again, ensure a certain quality level is maintained throughout the course of the meeting. Another feature that we've seen a little bit, I think, with the, uh, the T5 series in the past, but it, again, has been enhanced with the new T5 series, is the decked cordless phone edition feature. Uh, Yalink has the accessory DD10K, which is a small USB dongle that now will plug into a T5 phone. It can be any of the phones within the series. And that dongle will emit a decked radio frequency that will allow for up to four separate decked handsets. So this would be your W53H from Yalink or W56H to then register to the phone free of any sort of additional base station. That would be the W60B. This is a great opportunity for potentially like a retail environment or um, just a way to kind of save costs potentially as well. Um, small office, home office as well. But this was a simple addition of the DD10K dongle at the time of purchase with the desk phone or after the fact, and then certainly the, the wireless handsets, you can go ahead and set up this environment pretty seamlessly. As a part of this as well, with the T5 phones, if you wanted to just have a single decked handset, there's this feature now called clone mode, where instead of having four concurrent calls run through separate handsets registered back now to a desk phone, a wireless handset and a desk phone can share the same extension. So think for it as an example, in a small retail environment, you have a back office and then a front desk with a point of sale. You could then put the wireless handset up at the POS station, the desk phone back in the office. If there's only a, sh a single DID or an extension, both devices would ring and then whomever or wherever the individual is, they have the choice then of picking up either the desk phone or the, uh, the wireless phone. So it's just a nice little feature that's again part of the enhancement package that's been included now in the T5 series of phones. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are also now standard across the entire platform of phones. Previously with the T52, uh, uh, 2S and 54S, Bluetooth was standard, but Wi-Fi was not. And so the addition of the Wi-Fi inclusion, especially on the entry level T5 phones, is mainly the, the, the cause of the W addition. When we look at the T53W or 54W, that would indicate the uh, built-in Wi-Fi feature. So opposite of that, when we look at just the T53, no W, T53 is the part number, that device does not have built-in Wi-Fi. So when we see that W designator, that's, that's gonna include the Wi-Fi feature in the phone without the uh, requirement of the W50 or 40 uh, accessory. So this is another new feature as well, the T5 series. It's uh, built-in content sharing and collaboration support from the desk phone. So if you're not familiar today, Yealink does have a pretty diverse set of video conferencing, not only hardware, but software technologies. And that would include a desktop software application, excuse me, desktop software application that can run on a user's PC. So with the new T5 series IP phones, if you're sharing content or in a meeting and would like to share content, you could actually do that from <clears throat> the desktop software with your T5 IP phone to allow the far side participants see the information in real time, just to allow for more efficient and effective collaboration instead of saying, hey, let me you know, email you this link or email you this document. Did you get it? Did you not get it? What happened? You know, What's your spam filter? Like, all that is kind of avoided now, speeds up the, the collaboration process and just makes it easier to share more data in a more efficient manner. So that is, in effect, the, the, the um, quick highlights and feature change updates 
of the new T5 phones. Uh, I'm going to take a look now at a more granular feature-by-feature -feature level um, breakdown between the 53, 57, and 54 for you. Uh, I know there's kind of a lot here. I'll leave it up on the screen. I'm not going to go through each and every feature set and kind of you know, touch on the differences, but suffice it to say, there's a lot of standard features now, a lot of included features all across the 53, 4, 7 uh, devices, and we'll just take a look how that compares to the 52 and 54, which would be the, the previous uh, versions essentially of these phones. So what we see in red down here in the bottom left corner is kind of like the new feature enhancements that we kind of touched upon as we just went through the previous four or five slides. Um, those have been really the main focus of the uh, development of the T53, 54, and 57. All right. So here's just a more in-depth list of the features of the VP59 video phone. It is going to be more of a, a C-level or executive or management level type of phone. Potentially even could be an entry-level video endpoint for, for um, companies to take a look at if they're not necessarily looking to commit to a full-blown room end system a room endpoint, like let's say for the example, the VC200 or some of the new MVC uh, products if they're using Teams, let's say. Um, this is now just a lower cost point of entry, not only as a desk phone with a lot of collaboration features built in, but as a video conferencing hardware endpoint. So we have a nice eight inch color touchscreen, super sharp image on there, fully programmable touch DSS keys. It's a 1080 supportive uh, video phone. So that's going to be the quality it works at. It takes 16 SIP accounts, has an HDMI port out, which is actually pretty important um, as a video phone if you wanted to connect to your uh, PC uh, screen or if you just wanted to put the phone, let's say, in a small collaboration room, huddle room, you can connect the phone itself to a display by HDMI and expand just the overall view, uh, especially if there's content being shared or multiple parties in meetings. Just another way to kind of enhance the collaboration capability and the overall experience of the user at a pretty minimal cost. You can do call recording as well on the device just by way of the USB uh, ports included on board. So the T58A, as we mentioned before, is going to supersede the T56 and the T58V. It's kind of a unification of, of those two phones into a single platform. It's really the longest short with this new version. It's also called the smart business phone. Uh, it's just a nuance on, on a nuanced change on the, the model information. Previously, the 56 and 58 were the smart media phones. Now they're the smart business phone. Still an Android operating system. You can utilize APKs if you wanted to bring down your own custom applications as well. But it's a nice seven inch color touch screen that's adjustable, supports 720. Uh, video takes 16 SIP accounts. You know, all of the call recording and, and everything that we saw before is included. There is wireless headset support now for uh, decked and Bluetooth. I believe EHS is, is built into the T58 as well. I didn't touch upon this previously, but it's a good point to bring up. With the Android operating systems and the video support that the 58 and VP59 uh, have, it's a great pairing phone for access control, and especially video door intercoms. Uh, we personally distribute CyberData products, and CyberData makes a great set of um, audio and video IP intercoms. They work great on a multitude of, of platforms, but as well with, with Yealink. Um, IP video phones because they have the capability to utilize SIP for video connections all run through the PBX or even point to point. There's a couple different ways to do it actually. So um, becomes a great play when we're talking about access control for schools, for you know secure locations, for manufacturing, for a, a variety of, of use cases certainly. But um, we've seen an uptick recently in terms of sales of these types of products together. 
And I think it just speaks to the quality of both uh, manufacturers for that type of application. From the, the video phone, you can send uh, door strike commands, access code, you can punch that in. So there's a lot of uh, things that you can do between the two. I mentioned before previously real quick, but because the Android operating systems are built into the 59 and 58A, you can incorporate a variety of applications from cell phone to call recording to potentially even video conferencing, depending upon what you use, CRM, Teams, even um, the T58A is a uh, supporting chassis or phone for Teams integration. It does take an additional uh, firmware and license load to do that types of Teams uh, support, but the hardware itself is the same, whether we're talking about use with an IP PBX or a platform like Teams. As we look at the a defined list of features here. I do want to touch upon a couple of things. There is a new sidecar for the 5347 uh, and 8. It is the EXP50. It is a color uh, sidecar and it does have a full list of LED BLFs and physical buttons, but it connects by USB. Uh, one of the big changes between the EXP50 and some previous versions of Yanix sidecars is that it connected by a small um, RJ cable, I think it was an RJ11. Now with the T5 series, we're connecting by USB. With the VP59, that's now a PoE operating phone. Uh, it's predecessor of the T49G. That was a uh, power supply only phone. So now the VP59 runs on PoE, which is nice. Both devices, the VP59 and T58 support three-way video conferencing locally. So if the um, device, the phone itself, wants to have just a quick two, three-person meeting, all the participants who want to join in on a call can just call right into that endpoint extension. <clears throat> and that extension then would support all the meeting participants right then and there. You don't need a separate bridge or service, at least up to three uh, participants. All right, so now we want to take a quick look at the T5 series in relation to the T4. If you have customers today who are asking about what's the next thing on the, the product line card in the pipe from Yealink, or maybe it's time to upgrade or enhance um, what uh, customers have previous, per, previously purchased, or maybe this, this is a good way just to understand where these products sit in relation to some of the other uh, solutions Yealink has in the marketplace. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and compare some of the features and models to each other. So first things first, the T4 series itself is not going end of life. There is no estimated even plan or, or dates for end of selling the T4 series for phone. So those are not going to go away. As we kind of mentioned previously, the T5 series in and of itself is just an enhancement of the overall product line card. It's a more diverse set of products to target some more higher end customers and, and be a little bit more leading edge in terms of the products that Yannick has in the market today. So comparatively, we have the T53 and 53W compared to the T42S. We see the price points are relatively similar in terms of the MSRP when we're talking about the T53, a little bit more with the 53W because it does have the Wi-Fi as well as the Bluetooth built into the, the, sing, you know, the single device. But a lot of the features are, are pretty similar, if not a little bit greater when we, when we took look at the new T5 phones, just in terms of overall keys, um, the size of the screen, the amount of actual registrable accounts, it's just a little bit more enhanced on the, the T5 series, but similar price point to the, the T4. So next up, we have the T54W, and that most closely would compare to a T46. Uh, MSRP is just a $10 difference, a little bit more, 279 versus the 269 price point but still a lot of the, the features are the same. A lot of uh, similar complaints I've heard over the years is the T46 screen isn't adjustable, so obviously we've solved that with the T54 adjustable screen. 
and now we have the enhanced sidecar with the EHS, EHS, I'm sorry, EXP50. <clears throat> the acoustic shield feature is now built in, like we mentioned before. That's a nice upsell versus the T46, especially with such a similar price point. And then the decked handset feature is just another one of those things that just makes the T54 series or 54 phone stand out from the 46. And so when we take a look at what would be the closest comparable product to the T48, we have the T57. Again, the very similar price points, feature enhancements that we've already talked about around the screen, sidecar, PoE, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, the acoustic shield, that, or that is the kind of the feature set difference between the two. So it all kind of goes back to this is this more advanced leading edge technology versus the T48 and the T4 series. So just a quick look at potential target customers for these two these T5 phones. I know we talked about use case scenario, but in a customer perspective, we can take a look at folks who are already using higher end phones, maybe from a different manufacturer, or at least taking a look at what those other manufacturers have. T4 adopters or even T2 adopters who are looking for more upgraded or current versions. Customers who are on Android operating or Wi-Fi and Bluetooth supported phones. And just generally familiar, uh, or generally uh, customers who are familiar with Yannick but maybe haven't committed to their phones just yet and have been waiting for a more current or up to date type of product set. The idea is that we can reevaluate or re engage with customers potentially and, re and introduce these new series of phones. So outside of the T5 series, Yannick has now introduced the CP900. Uh, this is a brand new product that Yank is pretty excited to bring to market. It's designed for a multitude of use cases, as you can imagine, um, from the private office, huddle room, travel, you know, road warrior type of application. It's a wireless or USB connected speaker, and it has a 360 degree uh, pickup. It has two microphones, or I'm sorry, six microphones built in, and they're all beam forming as well. And Yannick included their noise proof technology that we talked about previously that reduces the total amount of ambient noise that's picked up by the speakers or by the mics themselves. It's pretty good talk time and battery life, 12 hours of talk time and 450 days of standby time. Um, so it's a pretty solid in terms of uh, the, the battery support that it has. So it use uh, uses a USB-C or um, Bluetooth connection between devices. You can choose how you want to uh, go ahead and do that. It also has built-in Teams integration. So if you have Teams users today who just want to utilize the soft phone applications and the software on the device of uh, their, on their PC device, but want to have or at least ensure a little bit more of a quality type of uh, collaboration or voice quality or just you know, more conducive to the spaces that they're operating in, it's a great opportunity to present the CP900. So much like the T5 series of phones, at least when we're talking about the 58, we have dual use case scenarios where we can talk about just using this CP900 uh, with soft phones and, and cell phones or with Teams applications and platforms. If you guys aren't familiar, uh, there are a ton of promotion that, promotions that Yalink has out there for, for reseller partners to take advantage of. Um, everything from generic sales programs based upon volume attainment to vertical market focus programs for, as, as an example, uh, education resellers. If you're, you know, it's that time of year for, for buying season, if you're selling to schools or, or looking to take advantage of some of the RFPs that are currently hanging out there for, for slot opportunities, there's also specific promotions and, and programs from Yannick for that as well. So if you all have a chance or are curious about that, if you're not taking advantage of these today, feel free to take a look at this site, usa.yannick.com. All those promotions can be managed through 888 VoIP. Feel free to reach out to your sales rep here as well. They all have a list of all the current promotions available to the channel that you all can discuss 
and they can get you as much detail and follow on information as possible. Go ahead and get you signed up or provide the application to get signed up. Um, I think it's a great opportunity not only to save money, but to enhance the, the business if you're doing or selling Yannick products today. In addition to the uh, promotional information, Yalink, if you haven't seen any of the uh, the recent emails or marketing engagement, is doing a global roadshow, and they're swinging through the U.S. throughout April and May, and uh, in Toronto, for that matter, so Canada. Um, so today, actually, as a matter of fact, in San Diego is the first event, but throughout the next few weeks here, within Phoenix, Chicago, Dallas, Philly, and Toronto, Yalink will be actually coming, the reps will be coming into town, setting themselves up doing product presentations, chatting about the current promotions, the new T5 phones, the new video conferencing and, and Teams products, and providing resellers and, and partners an opportunity to engage directly with the manufacturer. So if you're interested in attending or getting more information, go ahead and check out this link, roadshow.yalink.com. You can go ahead and sign up there. Or again, you could always reach out to your sales rep here at 888VoIP, see if we're going to be attending any one of these events, and go ahead and sign up that way as well. So with that, I will go ahead and address some of the questions that I've seen kind of pop up here as, as we've gone along. Um, if you've had everything that you wanted to have addressed, then feel free to uh, get back to the rest of your day. I appreciate that you took time to, to join us and to receive this information. Uh, again, my name is Kyle. I'm the, the vendor and, and product manager here at 888 VoIP. If there are any questions, feel free to reach out directly to your sales uh, rep at 888 if you don't have a dedicated uh, rep, go ahead and just email sales at 888voip.com. We can go ahead and get you hooked up. If you're not working with us today with someone here and get you signed up same day, if you're interested in becoming a partner and get you any additional information about being a Yaling partner or 888voip partner you might need. This information in terms of the webinar and the slide deck will be available um, in about a week or so. It will be available up on our website. Also, too, if you wanted to send me a note, if you want to have this deck sent directly to you, I could probably send that to you as well once we get it posted up on a place where we can you know, share it a lot easier than sending it through email. So with that, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your data to learn about Yank and the products that they're now bringing to market. With that, I'll take a look at some of the questions that have popped up. Uh, and Thank you again. So uh, first question, does the, the W, um, like for example, the T53 and, and T53W, does that also mean Bluetooth? <clears throat> so for the, the T53 as an example, because that's really the only applicable um, phone in, in this scenario, it doesn't necessarily include Bluetooth either. I think that device itself doesn't have either of those features built in, and that was a cost saving, excuse me, a cost saving action. Let me go back and just double check real quick. There we go. Let's see here, built-in Bluetooth. So yeah, no, it does not. So essentially with the T53, you have a USB port and you have the choice now to incorporate the WF40 or 50 for Wi-Fi or the BT40 for Bluetooth. Neither of those features will be built in. So in terms of EHS support, that's kind of a work in progress. Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you guys right at this moment about what that's going to be. Um, there has been rumblings that EHS would be supported internally without the addition of an adapter like the EHS 36. Uh, but as far as I know, that hasn't been 100% confirmed whether they're going to uh, enhance or update the existing phone or the, the new phones or roll out a new EHS adapter. Uh, We'll actually, I'll make a note of who's asking about that, and we'll send you updates as those come down. So uh, do all models that support DECT support DSS? Um, so in terms of like the wireless handsets having like line appearance keys, uh, as an example, when we were talking about the, um, the T5 phone being essentially a base station for W56H, you can have multiple line appearance or, or DSS keys programmed on the handset itself because we can have up to four concurrent calls running now through the, uh, the base unit or the phone in this example to the um, 56Hs. So uh, I believe it's very similar in terms of the registration process to how it was with the W60B with that 
base station and in this scenario, the phone being the device that's going to actually like house and, and hold all the registrations in terms of the extension. And then you can assign those to the individual handsets like you would through a W60B. <clears throat> but because we can have multiple concurrent calls running through the phones and multiple uh, extensions or DIDs assigned to the devices, then yes, we can program them in a more customized format. So yes, the correct, the, the, the answer to the question about the phones in this pairing mode, they do not register to a 60B because we're adding the DD10K dongle, it's a little USB adapter to the back of the T5 phone. And that adapter is what emits that radio, that depth radio frequency to allow the phones then to register down to that T5. So we can completely bypass the W60B if we wanna do a deployment of four or less wireless handsets. And that's kind of the, the difference between deploying a W60B and, and, and the uh, base station versus a T5 phone is that if we want more than four handsets in an area, then we're gonna need the 60B because that supports up to eight. Uh, and so if we're good with, with rolling with four or less, then that's potentially a, a value added proposition for the T5 phone. Uh, does Yannick have their own soft phone? Um, they, they, yes and no. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a video desktop application. And so it's primarily a video oriented software, but it can also take a SIP registration, if that makes sense. So they didn't make a, a audio specific software, but when they develop their video oriented desktop software, it also allows for SIP registrations along with H.323 or you know, video like cloud platform uh, gateway registrations. So um, that's just a, a one-time fee. There's a license cost associated to that desktop software. It's pretty cheap. I think it's like under 30 bucks to the channel. Uh, and like I said, it's a one-time fee. It's for Windows or Mac. You go ahead and get that loaded on, register to your preferred platform or PBX. So a uh, question came through, can we register multiple 53W back to the 60B? Um, no, right now it's just the, the, the 41 and 42, T41, T42. Uh, those devices kind of work in that format where we plug in the DD10K and instead of the 10K making the phone into a base unit, it allows the phone to register to a base unit. So um, the T5 series is not part of that yet, but the, the, the current way to do a desk phone or make a desk phone wireless in the sense that it connects back to a, a base unit is to roll the T41 uh, or 42. And, and like I said, when you add a W uh, or the, the DD10K um, in the same bundle, it becomes a W41 or W42. It's a good point though. They may change that in the future. Um, something to definitely be on the lookout for. So yeah, there is a feature that you can switch a live call from a desktop phone to a cordless phone. That would be the clone mode. Um, that's when we just have a single desktop uh, phone and a single wireless handset. Um, not for use with the multiple registered wireless handsets. It's just gonna have that one wireless handset. So it's great for the home office, it's like Soho user. I know that as a home office worker sometimes, that's a great feature to have allows a lot more mobility and you can like like you said you can migrate a a phone call pretty seamlessly from the desk to the wireless if you got to you know go on the move or vice versa if you take the phone call on the move got to get back to the desk sit down it really allows you to kind of switch se seamlessly um, between the two so that's the clone mode Do you need to add a decked adapter to the T5 phone to allow it to connect to the decked phones? Yes. You do need to add that DD10K. I think it's like a $40 part 
uh, maybe a little bit less. But yes, um, the radio itself, the deck radio emitter, is not in the phone. It, it has to be added, and we can bundle that, or you can purchase that after the fact if you've already bought a T5 phone but want to take advantage of that. Super easy to do. Just buy the DD10K, double check the firmware that you know is most current for that, and go ahead and register your handsets. Ooh, so that's a good question. So the, is there a way to have off-hook ring versus call waiting? Mm, probably, fortunately, is my answer. Um, hmm, I'd have to get back to you on that one. If not through the hardware, I'm sure we could figure out a way, depending on what platform you're, you're talking about. Um, but I don't have a good answer for you off the top of my head right now at the moment, Ken. Sorry about that. We'll get back to you. So in terms of like the wireless connections, it's only to the, the Yaling software or wireless phones. So when we're talking about doing DEX wireless handset connections, it's only with the, the W56H uh, and W53H. There was a question, the DEC dongle works in the T5 phone to connect wireless handsets to the phone. But the same dongle also works in a T5 or T4 phone to turn the 4 phone into a wireless phone, which is absolutely correct. Yes, um, the exactly. So the T41 and 42 within the T4 series can be turned into the W41 or W42 by way of the addition of the same exact adapter, the DD10K that we would also plug into a T5 phone to register wireless handsets too. Difference being obviously that in the T4 scenario, we're registering those back to a base. In the T5 scenario, we're effectively making a phone a base unit. So completely 86 is the base altogether. <clears throat> And one uh, T5 phone connect, can connect up to four wireless handsets with the addition of the DD10K. All right, guys, anything else that's coming to mind as we've kind of run through some of these questions? If anything pops up, again, email your sales rep. It'll probably filter back to me or the tech team. Uh, there's a couple questions in here that I know I didn't give the best answer for, but I want to make sure we do get you something. So we'll have to circle back with you maybe get some answers from the, the engineering team at Yannick for you uh, to kind of get you up to speed. But um, right now, if you aren't familiar, Yannick and, and 8 at 8, we're kind of working to ramp up our uh, stock position for all these products. It's been kind of, you know, a work in progress, but I, for the most part, a lot of these phones we do have stock of. I know we just received some T54Ws and, and 57s are in route. So we're getting there in terms of a large scale uh, capable support. We're almost there, maybe by you know mid-month, mid-May. That's the idea. But um, if there's opportunities where you think a T5 phone would be the play, let us know. We can certainly do deal registrations with Yaylink like we have for other phones in the past, T4, T2. Those are all going to be supported now as well. So we're at the point now where we can begin the sales cycle in terms of supporting the, the products with any sort of you know, additional product information or deal registration information that you need. Um, 
it's all going to be included like in like the other uh, phones that Yannick has out there in the space. So um, let us let us know if there's anything that you need from us here as a sales team. If you're not working with us today, meet at apoip.com forward slash, I believe, partner form, and that'll get you right to our online application. And uh, you can go ahead and fill that out if you're not working with us today. We'll get you signed up same day. So ballpark cost on the CP900, I unfortunately can't. Off the top of my head, I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to say a list price probably sub four or five hundred bucks though, um, based upon some of the competing products that are out there in the market. Uh, it usually is is going to be a price point around maybe four or three hundred even. We haven't seen anything official, unfortunately. Just some general pricing that I don't really want to commit to just just yet. But um, it's it's very very close to being I think released. Uh, we're waiting on some other things on the video conferencing side to be finalized as well. So uh, we will get it up on the website as soon as we can, um, which my goal hopefully is by the end of this month, if not within the first two weeks of May. So it's hard um, for us to kind of shoot individual emails of the slide deck, but we will have it posted up on our website. I, I believe our marketing director will have actually a recording of this. Uh, much to my chagrin and then we'll have a link to the deck itself um, it's such a beefy file that it's it's pretty hard to email directly so we want to be able to share it more than anything with you guys so we'll, we'll find a place for that to live and then um, i'm sure we'll send out a follow-up email thanking everyone and hopefully we'll have that link built in as well So, um, yeah, so Ken, real quick, if, if you're talking about having multiple, like, like almost like a line key appearance where we have line one or extension 100 versus extension 200 versus extension, yes, we can, we can certainly do that um, with the T5 phones. So even with the W56s uh, registered back to the, the, the T5 phone itself, if we wanted to, utilize you know extension 100 and then extension 101 as uh, line appearance keys on the wireless phone we could do that or you could do that on the desk phone
All right, guys, so it's, what, 10 to 3 here uh, on the East Coast, so I'll be hanging around for another couple minutes. Um, if there's anything that pops into your, in your brain in the next couple minutes, feel free to let me know. But uh, like I said, we'll work on kind of the follow-up activity now with uh, just sending some emails, getting this recording posted, getting the slide deck up in a place where we can share it a little bit easier than, than through email. Um, so again, thank you so much for the attendance, for the follow-up questions. Definitely is, is good to see that there's uh, engaged customers out there, people who are looking at this product critically, wanting to make sure that they fully understand it. We all know that it's for a reason. Obviously, you want to make sure you can articulate the value of these phones to your customers and hopefully maybe land a sale or two. So um, appreciate you making time today and the follow-up, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.
All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and shut it down. Thank you again for taking time out of your day and meeting with us, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.